Greetings fellow maker. In this Destiny Sweeper Bot build video, I'll show you how I sealed, painted, and weathered all the EVA foam armor parts. I'm pretty rough on my costumes. I travel a lot to conventions and just shove all my armor parts in the luggage. And then I'm my own worst hazard at the convention. I step on myself and bump into walls. Because of that, I like to seal all of my foam armor pieces with a flexible rubber material. This provides better adhesion for painting and also helps prevent the foam from wrinkling or cracking. I've only tried creature cast on a small hand prop before, so I decided to use my sweeper bot build to learn more about sealing with neoprene. I want to add temporary attachments for all my armor pieces to make sealing and painting way easier. We've got a bunch of handmade wire hooks with different attachments that we use to hang parts for painting. I keep a few strips of floor mat edging around for this process. The strips are glued to the foam parts and, after painting, can be cut free. There's a bunch of textured panels that will be glued onto the armor, but these were sealed and painted separately. I glued on some scrap foam and attached the panels down to scrap floor mats. This will make sealing and painting all these pieces much faster. We got some creature cast neoprene in the super flex off white, but we also had some leftover creature cast in black in what I think is about the medium flexibility. I added a little bit of thickener at a time until the mixture wanted to cling to the popsicle stick. Now I can apply a thick coat with our critter siphon gun. The inside edges and outside of each piece were coated with two layers before I finished off the black neoprene. When wet, the black neoprene looks more gray, but when it dries, it looks darker. This is handy for applying a second coat. You'll know what parts you've covered already. For the creature cast off-white, I've heard it dries pretty transparent, so I tried pigmenting the creature cast with Angelus leather paints. I needed the base paint to be a lighter gray, so I figured putting the color into the creature cast would save time. I mixed the gray color separately since I knew the color would look too light with the off-white neoprene. I was encountering some clogging issues in my critter gun, so I made sure to strain the paint and creature cast before spraying. I sprayed on two coats of gray, which dried to the darker gray pigment color. This whole process took way longer than I estimated. I had a ton of pieces to get through, and the creature cast dried so quickly that the critter gun nozzle still kept clogging. I wanted to add more layers, but I was short on time. Some parts needed to be orange, so I mixed some paint and brushed onto the armor with a soft synthetic brush that tends to not show brush strokes with the Angelus leather paints. I also tried running the paint through my airbrush, but something strange was happening. The straight acrylic paint was beating up on the sealed foam and not applying evenly. I think this was because I only gave the creature cast a few hours to cure. I called it a night and when I tried this again in the morning, the paint went on perfectly fine. A light layer of Tamiya acrylic silver was airbrushed on the circles and the tubes. The textured panels were suspended with some foam chunks, and the rubber in the attachment areas was cut and peeled away, just to make sure everything bonded really well. I just used hot glue. None of these panels will be load-bearing, so I'm not too worried about them peeling off. To simulate some paint chipping, I brushed on Tamiya Silver in the high-impact areas, like edges and corners. I protected my paint with a layer of matte varnish. Besides protection, the varnish also removed any tackiness from the neoprene in Angela's paints and gave me a uniform surface for weathering. Before I go over weathering, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for watching this build series, for liking the videos, for sharing them with your friends, and for leaving such great feedback. I want to inspire and share what I've learned, and it's so great to see you've been taking this information and just making awesome things. And a special thank you to our patrons. Our Patreon supports our video content, allowing me to take the time to record the whole build of the sweeper bot and share everything I've learned with you. If you'd like to become a patron, head on over to patreon.com slash punish props. For the first round of weathering, I mixed some black acrylic paint with water in a spray bottle. The mixture was sprayed on an entire armor piece and blotted away with a paper towel. This dirtied up the orange paint areas and gave a nice, uneven blotchiness to the gray areas. I was hoping the dark paint would stay in all the recessed areas, which worked on some parts. 
The rest of the crevices were enhanced with a mixture of brown and black Liquitex heavy body acrylics. This paint was brushed into the recesses and blended away with a paper towel. I got some airbrush overspray from the silver paint, which I covered up with weathering, also filling in the circle indent with more heavy body acrylics. If I have the time, I like to do several passes of weathering, adding in some different dirt colors and layers. But there's no rust on the Sweeperbot reference, so I stayed away from burnt sienna. To add finer scratches in the chipped paint look, I used Liquitex Silver and a ragged chip brush. Most of the silver was brushed onto a paper towel, and the almost dry brush got lightly dragged over some of the edges. It's super easy to overdo dry brushing. Fortunately, the Sweeperbot reference is pretty beat up. And that's the last bit of weathering I added. Now that my convention deadline is over, I may go back in and do another weathering pass. I'm not going to add any more varnish or protect the top layers of paint. If the paint gets naturally weathered, I think it'll just look cooler. Here's what I've learned about working with CreatureCast. Make sure to read through all the directions. For example, you don't want to add too much thickener. There's a certain ratio you want to stay under. We've had this jug of black neoprene for over a year and it still worked just as well as when we first got it. So it seems to have a great shelf life as long as it's kept airtight and doesn't freeze. Before painting, give the neoprene at least a day to cure in a warm environment. A hairdryer can help speed up this process. I think I should have broken up my armor into like four different batches just to make things seem less overwhelming. It's possible to end up with a smooth surface if enough thick layers are sprayed on, but that only happened on a few pieces since I was rushing and didn't give everything the same amount of love. Creature cast can totally be sanded, but it seems like the more flexible versions don't sand as easily. Adding pigment to the off-white creature cast seems to work great, but one thing I did notice is that when the finish is wet, it has a milky sheen to it. Once the finish is dry, it just goes back to normal with no harm done. Maybe this is the slightly translucent nature of the off-white creature cast, but I'm not sure. In this build, I learned how difficult it was to try and seal, paint, and weather armor all in one day. The next time I do a full armor build, I'll make sure to leave at least three days, one for sealing, one for painting, and one for weathering. I really just need to allow everything enough time to cure and dry. With Creature Cast, I feel like I need more practice. I've only tried it twice, and just like with every other kind of material, the more I use it, the more I learn. Thank you for watching this video. I look forward to trying more sealing and painting methods in future projects. In my next Sweeperbot video, I'll cover how I made the undersuit and attached all the armor pieces. See you then. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.